Over the past year, we have achieved huge and numerous developments, chiefly freedom and independence as we rid our country of foreign occupation, injustice and oppression. This is what any people or country under occupation aspires to. It is a source of pride for us. It is also a blessing. You have been out and about and you can see for yourselves the huge transformations in our country in terms of security. It is the first time in 40 years to have a central government taking control of the whole country, corner to corner, inch to inch. The central government, which without any levies or foreign aid, is capable of paying government employees salaries across all state institutions. These are just a few examples. Let's talk about when you came to Kabul. Um, why did the Taliban not respect the agreement uh, that there was signed in Doha? Why did you use force? Why did you take over Kabul by force uh, rather than negotiating your way inside? Throughout 14 months since the withdrawal of the U.S. and NATO forces, there has not been a single case of violation. A living proof of such fact is the host and sponsor, the state of Qatar. In contrast, numerous violations, actually more than 1,000, were committed by the U.S. forces and former Kabul government. For example, was when Biden came to power, he extended the date of the withdrawal by four months without negotiating with us, let alone the delay in removing names from the blacklist, the delay to release Afghan prisoners. There is a long list of violations. Violations. Despite our frustrations, we preferred not to resort to violence. However, the sudden vacuum in Kabul was the reason for us to step in, in addition to the request made by Karzai and Abdullah for us to come and take control. You promised a lot of things. You promised peace. You promised rights for Afghans. You promised an inclusive government. Uh, you promised women's rights. How many of those promises have you kept? The foreign occupation that has been controlling Afghanistan over the past 20 years with their advanced technologies, huge capabilities and resources, they failed throughout that time, failed to restore the security and order our people are enjoying now. It has been only one year since we assumed power and the world should not expect us to achieve all our goals overnight. It is next to impossible, especially when the international community has not fulfilled promises, including recognition of our rule and foreign aid. Despite the delay on their part, we, by the grace of God, achieved huge progress on many fronts. Now you can see girls joining universities and schools. Needless to say, there are many measures still to be taken in all our ministries and other state institutions. Security and order is the paramount goal. Does your family... Uh, do the leaders of the Taliban who are under restrictions, do they need to be in government? Isn't that an impediment on Afghanistan? Uh, why aren't other people involved in taking care of the government? Because there are a lot of sanctions against uh, many members of this government. Uh, Till this day, the whole world has not come to a uniform definition of terrorism. It has been the usual habit that those in power label anyone standing in their way as a terrorist, enemy, hostile, etc. History has many examples. Yasser Arafat and Nelson Mandela remained for years on the blacklist. Later, they were awarded the Nobel Prize. Blacklists and sanctions are nothing but a political tool. Our paramount goal was to free our country of the shackles of occupation, to regain our freedom and independence, and that is what we accomplished. Now we do not wish to interfere with other countries and other people's affairs. We and the whole Afghan people regard our leaders highly. Our leaders are regarded as heroes, as leaders to freedom and independence. More than three million people are internally displaced. In terms of food insecurity, uh, it's, what is considered to be the second largest uh, crisis, food crisis in the world. Uh, do you think you're satisfied with what you've achieved in one year? And what are you doing for the people of Afghanistan? As I stated earlier, Afghanistan today is totally different from what it was 20 years ago. For example, the former government failed to do anything for Mazari Sharif. They were reeling under pressures from the occupation. We started to do something in the right direction. Now you see minerals and natural resources are being extracted using local and foreign companies. 
By the grace of God, through these projects, we are now able to generate revenues for the functioning of our ministries and other institutions. All these revenues used to fall into the wrong hands in the past. All the state revenues are now channeled into the government's treasury. Having said that, we aspire to enjoy good and friendly relations with the whole world. We're here to serve our people. I believe we have managed to achieve a lot for our people, but we aspire for more despite the challenges we are facing from the international community, including the issue of recognition. Very quickly, if you could tell us, one of the promises that you made to the outside community was that the Afghan soil is not going to be used by any outside groups. There are going to be zero tolerance for any terrorist organizations or individuals who might be working against other governments. In the last few weeks, we've seen a number of assassinations take place. The leader of the Tehrik-i Taliban, Pakistan, has been killed. The leader of Al-Qaeda has been killed in Kabul. Uh, what is your government doing and how is it going to keep its promise? Since the signing of the agreement, we have been honoring all obligations. We dare anybody to give a single example or a single occasion where our territories were used to undermine other countries' security. The statement made by the Islamic Emirate explaining its position was very clear. We are committed to the Doha Agreement. It clearly sets out the obligations placed on us as well as the U.S. If any violation was committed, it was the U.S. who entered our territories without permission, even without notifying us. This was a clear violation on the part of the U.S. Theirs is a malicious propaganda aimed at smearing the image of the Islamic Emirate. We reject and refute these false claims, and I reiterate, we have not violated any of our obligations under the Doha Agreement. We are committed to honoring our obligations and wish to see the other party honoring theirs and live up to their responsibilities.